Well, I've never really entered the smart speaker market yet, and this is my first review with the Google Home Mini. I understand a lot of people have asked me about this, and in fact, a lot of people have purchased this product, and I think that's why so many people were so curious, because they were like, Drew, I bought this thing that's made by Google. You don't really like Google. Why don't you also buy this thing? That way we can agree on something. At least that seems to be the most common consensus. But anyways, for the past few days, I've been using it, and I've pretty much got it into a rhythm of what it's good for and what it's not good for. And a lot of people are likely expecting me to say that this is terrible, this is not a product you should buy because you are an Apple sheep. This is not made by Apple. Therefore, you should wait until the HomePod is available and just be like, $350 for a better speaker, that's okay. Where this is not okay. But the issue with complaining about cheap products, as I've discovered recently, as so many people commented on my live unboxing of this speaker, is that when a product is so incredibly cheap, it's very hard to complain about it. Because every single complaint I may have about the sound quality or about, I don't really find the Google Assistant super useful, but then again, I don't really find many digital assistants very useful. To me, Siri at least is good for like texting, playing music, and looking up quick facts occasionally. And yes, while I agree the Google Assistant is faster at all of that, you can access the Google Assistant on any smartphone, not just Android. We have this on iOS. But yeah, the fact that this thing costs $30, and it's normally $50, but apparently it's on sale for the rest of 2017. And depending on where you get it, you can find it even cheaper. A cousin of mine bought the Google Home Mini with a $26 Walmart gift card, meaning that the Home Mini actually only costed him four dollars and then that gift card he can go use at Walmart. That's insanely cheap. I mean that's next to nothing and I think because this product is so cheap is why so many people are recommending it and are saying it's a great purchase is because it costs more to fill up your gas tank than it does for this tech product. So I want people to keep that in mind when I'm talking about my thoughts on this is that I understand okay it's cheap. That does not necessarily mean it's good and that really begs to question if a product is cheap does that necessarily mean that it's okay to buy it or do I I need to recommend it because heck it's $30 or even as little as $4 depending on where you're buying it from. What's the worst that could happen just by buying a single product if it doesn't cost much? And that is the honest to God truth. There really isn't much of a problem. If this is affordable to you and even if it looks relatively interesting, buying it is not going to hurt your bank account very much. That's why kind of reviewing it and talking about it is a little bit silly because I doubt that there's many people on the market who are on the fence about the home mini. It's like, should I buy it or should I not? Even if you buy it and end up not liking it, I bet a lot of people wouldn't even take the time to send it back. Because hey, I lost $30. Big whoop. So my thoughts on the product are, with all of that keeping in mind, I understand it's perfectly cheap. Most consumers out there can just buy this thing and decide, yeah, it was a worthy purchase. Barely any money. Or, well, this was stupid, but I guess it was $30, so no harm done. My main complaint with the Google Home Mini is I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to be. A lot of people have different opinions on it. A lot of people out there are like, it's the Google Assistant brought to more people. They lowered the price of the regular Google Home so that more people could enjoy the Google Assistant powering their smart home devices and setting timers. I can't believe for a 2017 product how much consumers bring up the fact that you can set timers on a $30 device. Timers have been around for a while and they're typically on your smartphone, they're on your watch, they're on your iPads even. And I get that those are more expensive, I'm just saying we don't pay for a single product that does that one single thing. Typically, you know, you have to have a smartphone to set up this device. So if you have a smartphone, I think you have a digital assistant in it that can do that already. And the difference between the smartphone and this device is that the smartphone can go places, which of course, what I'm trying to say is you already have. I'm not trying to say that this should be compared to a smartphone. I'm just saying that you have devices already that are capable of doing basically everything this is advertised for, except one thing, being a dedicated speaker. That is the primary difference in hardware between an iPhone or a Google Pixel or a Galaxy phone, whatever it is. Is. The primary difference between this device and this device is one of them is a dedicated speaker and one of them is a smartphone. We get this. The reason I'm talking so much about what this device is is because I don't think it's a very good speaker. It does not sound very good. I understand that it is cheap. You can bring that up all you want. That does not change the fact that the sound quality to me is not very good given that maybe I'm a bad example, but I have an iMac with pretty good sounding speakers on it. I have a MacBook with pretty good sounding speakers on it. My 
iPad sounds pretty good, and even my iPhone with its stereo speakers are pretty good for most daily things. I feel like if you're buying a device that is dedicated to just being a speaker, then that primary objective, the fact that your smartphone is not a dedicated speaker, your iPad is not a dedicated speaker, then these smart speakers should have an emphasis on sound quality, if that's primarily what it is. It's a smart speaker, or is it a digital assistant that also has a speaker attached to it? A lot of people aren't really sure. I've heard a lot of people say one thing, and a lot of people say a different one, but having you used a Google Home at a Best Buy, I definitely can admit that if you absolutely need a smart speaker, you should buy one that actually sounds good. You should buy something that fills the room with crisp sounding audio with good bass. And to me, it's not like this thing is quiet. This thing is definitely loud, but I'm not even an audiophile and I can admit that loud is not necessarily good. It's very loud, but it's very heavy on the trebles. Of course, there's no subwoofer and I can't really blame it because it's so tiny. A device this small can't really sound very good. So I understand you're trying to make something small small that has the Google Assistant built into it, but that also requires a speaker. So I'm just kind of confused of the purpose of this device. I feel like its primary goal is to be cheap so that everyone can buy one or everyone can buy several of them and just have kind of a fun toy. To me, this definitely falls into the toy realm because with digital assistants, every person who says why you should buy this thing falls to the same like five answers. It can play you the news, it can set timers, it can play music, which of course is kind of dependent on the sound quality, you'd think, and you can ask it random questions, which I must have to say, maybe this is the fundamental difference between us Apple sheep and the rest of the world is that I'm not sitting around my room. I'm not sitting in the living room and just thinking of random questions. That's not in my daily life. If it is, the very rare time, I'll typically just go on my phone and search it. There's a lot of questions I have that this thing cannot answer. And while I admit, yes, that the Google Assistant is very, very smart, that does not mean I'm going to go out of my way to talk to this device every single day. It's just not in my nature. If that is in your nature, congratulations, your phone still does it. But again, you can keep resorting to the fact that, hey, it's $30. See, I just recently reviewed the UE Megaboom, which is a very good sounding speaker. Wireless one that can connect to your phone and you can take it with you. It's water resistant. And yes, I understand that's more expensive. That was around $150. So yeah, for the price of that, you could buy five of these, but at the same time, you'd have five average sounding speakers versus a really good sounding speaker. Gets incredibly loud, has amazing bass quality, overall sound is crucial over there and I can take it wherever I go. If I want to pair it to the TV, I can do that. If I want to go on a hike and play music on the hike, I can do that. If I want to listen to it in the tech room, I just take it with me. If I want to listen to it in the lobby, I take it with me. That's the great thing about mobile speakers. Whereas this, while it kind of feels like it should be a mobile product, then I think that I would probably give this thing a bit more credit if you could take it with you. If this had a battery pack on the bottom or something and you could just throw this in your backpack and now you have the Google Assistant on you all the time, that would make a tad more sense but the fact that this doesn't go anywhere, I find like a very minor difference in my lifestyle with this device. And I never look at this thing and think, oh, thank God I have you. Thank God I purchased this. It's so helpful in my day-to-day -day life. It's kind of like, oh yeah. I, I have that still. But of course, I know you're gonna keep resorting to the fact that it's only $30, it's so cheap. Why not just buy it just as a toy? Just because talking to a computer is fun and sometimes funny. You can say funny things to it. You can ask it to tell you a joke. You can play Star Wars trivia. It, it's a toy, yes. Again, all of those features can be done on your phone, but I can understand consumers being like, hey, I haven't bought anything in a while. I want a new tech device so that I feel like my ecosystem has been expanded and I feel like I have more things to play with. So I'll just buy this because it's really, really cheap and it's kind of fun sometimes. But that's how I classify a toy, not really a product. It's just something that's kind of fun to play with, but not very useful. When I'm in the market for speakers, I'm into something that will sound good. And credit where credit is due, this can sound okay if you turn it at around 50% volume and it's just kind of background noise. I could see this being appealing to college students for people who are living in very small spaces, tiny apartments. If you're not going to be blaring music all the time, this is like having headphones on quietly but without the headphone part so if you just want to play a simple radio station in the background that I found it's been pretty nice for that that was pretty easy you just tell Google that you wanted to play some quiet background beats that's nice I guess but again I'd really encourage people to rather save their money don't settle for something so small get a better sounding speaker there are tons of them out there there are tons of speakers out there with Alexa equipped with Cortana equipped and I'm not a Google guy we all know that but if you absolutely need a speaker I'd recommend going with the home 
Home because that's just going to sound better in the long run. But the Google Home is $80 right now. I, okay, okay. Listen, what no one is addressing with this speaker when they keep telling everyone that it's $30, it's so cheap, it's such a great deal, you cannot believe it. The more you bring that up, the more I start to question why don't we feel that way about the Amazon Echo Dot? The Echo Dot is actually capable of some things that this is not. Unintentional rhyme. Okay. Ooh. So first of all, one of the first things I wanted to try with this thing is maybe it could just introduce you to the Google Assistant and then could convert my other speakers, my other older speakers or other wireless speakers into a Google Assistant powered device. That way this could just listen to you and because the speakers are not very good, you could rely on other speakers for playing back audio. That's what I thought this was. Apparently it is not. I have looked online. You cannot pair wireless speakers to this device. I was really looking forward to pairing my Mega Boom to the Google Home Mini. That way I could tell Google to play something and it would come out of the Mega Boom and sound really nice. It doesn't do that. But you know what does? The Amazon Echo Dot. And heaven forbid you must use the headphone jack, which you guys know I'm not a fan of. But if you have an older stereo system, I could even understand having a headphone jack on the Echo Dot because what it means is you're converting your old style speakers, your speakers that aren't wireless, into a smart device, into a device that can listen to you and you can voice command it and stuff. That's actually useful. And the Echo Dot, at least right now, it might not be till the rest of the year, but right now is $30. And it has Alexa on it. And I know Alexa has some advantages and disadvantages, but the main fact of the matter is the Echo Dot hardware allows it to pair to other wireless speakers as well as plug in headphone jack speakers to it. And then you can have some better sounding audio opposed to this thing, which does not allow you to do that. You cannot pair other speakers to this. You can turn this for some reason into a Bluetooth speaker and have your phone output to this. Why is that an option? I don't know. But at least with the Echo Dot, you have those options. And for those curious, no, I'm not going to be ordering an Echo Dot because I know that that's not primarily built on sound quality. I already have a wireless speaker that I felt is built on sound quality and I can take it with me. Whereas this, you cannot take with you. You plug it in, it stays there. You plug it in with micro USB, like come on Google. I know that probably kept the product cheap, but I, I still would have preferred USB-C. <laughs> credit where credit is due, being able to change the volume just by tapping the sides, that's neat. It's like technology, I don't understand. So woohoo, good job Google. It's nice that it comes in three colors, which is neat. And it's nice that you made products that are so affordable. But yeah, I'm not gonna say I don't recommend this product. Obviously it caters to such a wide demographic. It's hard to say no, it's like don't waste $30 on this device because you'll probably get a couple hours of entertainment out of it over the course of its lifetime where you're just kind of like, hello, Google, do this. And I say hello because statistically when I say hello, it doesn't activate and I don't want to set your guys' off. But my point is, while yes, it's very cheap and it's very nice that you can expand your tech ecosystem and have a new toy to play with for a very cheap price. I'm also going to say that if you haven't bought one yet, your life is going to be perfectly fine without it. I look at things like my Apple Watch and think like, how could I live without this? And I use my iPad on a daily basis. I use my phone, obviously, on a daily basis. I feel like those have functions in my life. And this, I feel like, is almost built for kids. It's like, I need to go out of my way to use this device. So all I'm saying is functionally, not necessary, just kind of extra. But again, because it's so cheap, I, I can't blame you for buying it. It's like, well, I don't care what Talos of Tech says about the Google Home Mini. I can just spend $4 and try it for myself. In fact, if you can find good deals on the Google Home Mini, you can find it really, really cheap. I'll actually encourage you to buy it because I know Google's losing money on it. There's no way this thing costs under $4 to produce. So if you're finding those really good deals at Target or wherever, do take them because Google's losing money on that. Anyway, I'd be curious to see Apple's approach if they made a mini, mini HomePod. Obviously I'm biased, so I would probably like it more than this, but it would probably sound better. And as of now, it sounds like Apple can't really get their stuff together yet for the HomePod, which I'm very excited for because as I've mentioned in this video, I think that smart speaker doesn't have a focus on being smart because that's more toyish elements, but it has a focus on being a good speaker. The people who have listened to it at WWDC mentioned that it definitely outperformed the Amazon Echo in Google Home. While costing a lot more, I get it. Apple's not about being the cheapest. They're about being the best. So I'm excited to hear it. And while yes, it'll cost a lot more, I'll be a lot happier to have it in my life just to be able to talk to that speaker and tell it to play some background chill music and have it sound really, really crisp. I'm looking forward to that. This is just kind of like, eh. 
Yeah. Cheap, cheap, cheap product. You have to keep bringing that up when you're talking about it. But again, there's an Amazon Echo Dot that can do a lot more, more functionality. You can plug it into different speakers. You can pair it to Bluetooth speakers if you decide to upgrade your sound system down the road. Whereas this, just filling your house with these, I, I don't see the point. Anyway, let me know your thoughts and comments on the Google Home Mini. I'll be curious to hear them. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.